Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are here to share our presentation with you called Intersecting, Intersecting Visual Art and Text, Creative Critical, Transgenre Approaches and Identities in Writing and Teaching. I'm Kristen LaFollette from the University of Southern Indiana. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Jonathan Brownlee from Indiana Tech. So I'm going to start out reading my first part of my our presentation here, Creative Critical Approaches to Research and Scholarship. And my contact information is there. I would love to hear from you if you have any questions after the presentation that we don't address in the Q&A. So in this presentation, John and I argue against the scholarly versus creative binary and instead advocate for a creative critical arts-based approach to scholarship and pedagogy. I will begin this presentation by focusing on the benefits of a creative critical approach and how it can be implemented. John's portion of the presentation then will focus on using these creative critical approaches as teaching tools in writing classrooms. So John and I met when I was a second year student and he was a first year student in the rhetoric and writing doctoral program at Bowling Green State University. We both quickly realized how much we had in common and the unique ways our creative and scholarly identities overlapped. I'm a creative writer, a painter, and a collage artist, and a photographer, and I'm also a writing studies and gender studies scholar and teacher. John is also a fiction writer and a poet, a visual artist, a scholar of philosophy and rhetoric, and a devoted teacher of both academic and creative writing. As you can see, we are interdisciplinary and focus our creative and scholarly efforts on a broad range of interests. Prior to meeting John, I struggled to find a place for my identities as a creative writer and artist in a field that seemed to only focus on academic writing and scholarship. However, connecting with John helped both of us to see the constellated nature of our identities as writers, artists, scholars, and teachers. And we started collaborating and bringing our intersecting identities to the forefront in our writing, art, scholarship, and pedagogies. For example, when my first collection of poems was released, John served as the MC for my on-campus reading. When John needed headshots for networking and preparing for the job market, I shot and edited his photos. And in exchange, he gifted me one of his original paintings, a piece that ended up being featured in one of our later collaborative art exhibitions. Along with another student in our program, John and I both read some of our creative work at an open mic night at a local bookstore. And through that reading, we were able to connect with a local gallery owner who helped John and I curate our own exhibition. At the time, I had just wrapped up my dissertation and my part of the exhibition showcased the almost 20 collages that were a central component of my art space project. The collages combined photography and various found materials along with excerpts from the dissertation. And in that same exhibition, John showcased a set of his original paintings. To promote our exhibition, we hosted an ecrastic reading where participants wrote poems based on our works of art and shared them with the group. And if you're taking a look at our accessibility script, I do have a couple images there to share with captions that show um, some of our uh, collaborative work that John and I have done together. So we were doing all of these creative arts-based activities on top of the work we were doing as students and scholars and teachers, but it never felt right to have such a separation between the various elements of our identities. I'm not just a scholar and teacher, but an artist, writer, and photographer as well. What John and I hope to communicate through this presentation is, not, is, is that not only is it possible to bring the academic and creative together in all the work we do, but that the scholarly versus creative divide is false and really puts limits on what we can do and what we teach. Scholar Sydney Alexis notes that too often binaries are leaned on in order to praise one thing and devalue another. And this is especially true in the broader field of English, where there's often a strict separation between work that is deemed scholarly and work that is labeled as creative. Ultimately, the scholarly versus creative argument only further emphasizes an outdated binary that doesn't reflect the reality of writing, researching, and creating. Instead, we argue for a constellating of art and creative writing within writing study scholarship and pedagogy. In an effort to avoid the scholarly versus creative binary, I refer to myself as a creative critical writer and scholar and use the term trans genre to refer to the work I do as it often spans the traditional boundaries of genre and includes various elements in one. Scholars and proponents of multimodal or trans genre work note that truly connecting and engaging with an audience can require us to create in multiple modes and embrace a process-focused approach that values the messiness of the writing itself over the finished product. Patricia Sullivan notes that, though the lines dividing different pedagogical projects can be blurry and shifting, through the freer aesthetic space created by experimental and alternative discourses, creators and students may be allowed to express their unique individualities 
articulate marginal or underrepresented social realities and or critique the limits of dominant socio-political discourses. I want to focus for a moment on a recent example of how I've embraced and used my own constellated identities and approaches in my work as an artist, writer, and scholar. This past year, I co-edited a collection titled Queer Approaches, Emotion, Expression, and Communication in the Classroom. The collection focused on diversity and inclusion initiatives to support marginalized students and faculty in institutions of higher learning. And my particular chapter for the book focused on using queer theory as a lens to create more inclusive classroom spaces for students with post-traumatic stress disorder. Because of my creative critical identity and because of queer theory's focus on identity and challenging traditional norms, I reimagined the chapter and used elements of visual art and poetry when creating it. In addition, the cover of the book features one of my own original photographs. Ultimately, I was able to bring my identities as a writer, artist, photographer, scholar, and teacher into this trans genre project. I also have a couple images from that project here that you can see on the screen, but you might be able to see it better in the actual accessibility script that is available in the um, Google Drive. Um, but these are a couple images from um, the chapter that I put together for that collection. Not only did I love working on the Queer Approaches project because it brought together the various parts of my creative critical identity, but it also communicated my goals in new and interesting ways. PTSD is a disorder that impacts human beings and I didn't think that straightforward academic writing was the most successful way to talk about such a complex topic. Instead, I decided to weave visual art, collages and photographs and poetry into the chapter to bring a sense of humanity to the discussion and to more clearly communicate my argument and approach to readers. Further, the chapter conveys that there isn't one way to be a scholar or academic and a creative critical trans genre approach actually works to make academic writing more accessible to a broader audience. And now I will turn it over to my colleague, John, for his portion of the presentation. Hello, um, my name is Dr. Jonathan Brownlee. Um, like Kristen said, I teach at Indiana Tech and I would love to hear any of your feedback um, on my email if you'd like. So um, Kristen talked about how she engages in the creative critical approach. Now I'm going to talk about how I can use it and how uh, we use it in the class. I will discuss how erasing the divide between the creative and scholarly in the classroom makes for very interesting, freeing, and yet still rigorous work. Moreover, I will discuss how a trans genre approach can inspire students not only to be more creative inside and outside of the academic setting, but this approach can help students expand their mind and it can lead them to look for connections or constellated ideas in interesting, interesting and beneficial ways. In short, this approach may use more of a student's mind and creativity than a single genre approach. Before I became friends with Kristen, I was a writer um, and an artist, but I was not familiar with the values and complexity of a transgenre approach and or the medium of collage. As a scholar, much of my work focused on the connection between rhetoric and philosophy and the different concepts that those entail. But I left my writing and painting for my personal life and my personal time. In many ways, I believed in the binary of scholarly versus creative. However, my collaboration with Kristen has taught me two things. That mixing genres can lead to more true to life research and pedagogical approaches. Uh, we are, we as humans are not just um, one thing at a time. We are everything all at once. So combining those are useful. And two, collaboration is one of the best ways to learn and expand one's knowledge of important findings and topics in the field. And those findings can be applied to the classroom. Um, if it were not for my history of collaboration with Kristen, I don't believe I would have offered collage as an option in my creative writing class that I'm teaching for the first semester. But not only did I offer it as an option, several students elected to take it up in their projects. Moreover, they found it to be challenging because they were required to make connections that aren't normally made in the typical uh, college classroom. So during an email exchange, I told Kristen that I was thinking about um, having collage as an option in my class. 
and she sent me uh, various examples of how she used collage in her work and scholarship. Uh, and the example exchange is right there on, on our accessibility script. So in the first project of the semester, multiple students in my creative writing class chose to do collage. I had one conversation with a student who had taken creative writing courses at another university. And he said that until this first project, he, he had never thought of trying to use collage. What is more, this student who clearly loves writing is a graphics design major. And this project allowed him to combine his interests and identities into one single project. So I thought it was interesting that a person who is a major in graphic design never thought about combining their interest in graphic design with their interest in creative, creative writing. Here's the image that they were gonna use and then combine with words to form a collage. Um, another student said that she was a photographer but that she was nervous to try collage because she had never done it and she couldn't quite wrap her head around it and how she could combine it with her poetry. So during class, I showed her a few of Kristen's collages and um, she really thought that they were interesting and it helped her understand how she could use collage. Um, after that conversation, she decided that she would do her second um, project on collage. Here are just two examples of how collaboration between Kristen and I led to pedagogy and projects in the real world. Moreover, it shows that a transgenre approach does not simply give students freedom to do whatever they want. It challenges them to think in different and more creative ways. Um, the transgenre approach is not easy for students as many people might think. Maybe people think that just doing collage is easy work. Um, but students find it challenging to figure out ways to combine their artistic thought and their uh, critical thought together in one project. And I think that's a good thing. Being challenged to stretch one mind, one's mind and think in critical and creative ways is the height of education in my point of view. Thanks, John. So we have some sources here at the bottom as well that we used in our presentation. Um, but we're looking forward to talking with you all more in the question and answer session. Thanks for listening.